so many regular golfers are in the process of adding more extension in their downswing. Do you like the bowed wrist at the top? At the top, uh... I love I love it for most people. It's it's not a, it's not for everything. You know, okay. we don't teach. But most most tour players tour players are a little bit cup. Right. Players that tend to be a little cup tend to be faster swinging players because they go from this to this, and it tends to put a little more velocity into the club head. Okay. A lot, you know. So, but almost all players square the face early. Okay. And when you have a square face, then all you have to do is turn. Right. Right. You give yourself a better opportunity. You cannot just go to the top and rotate. You cannot just go to the top and make your swing. The hands have to be educated to do a certain thing because the golf club is like this. The thing that destroys people's golf swings more than anything else is the face. You don't want to lose the ball. And if, if golf, if all golf was, was just like taking a stick and hitting the ground and seeing who made the, be the best scar in the ground or, or, or just could swing a stick the fastest, that'd be fine. Uh, or even like baseball it has no face. You're just swinging the stick and you, and whether your wrist is like this or this or that, it's, it's basically going somewhere. And, and also the spread in baseball is this, it's not that, but with, with golf, the face destroys everything more than anything. The person does not want to lose their ball. That is in their mind, the entire swing. They don't want to shank it. They don't want to lose their ball. So they, what usually happens, and this is what happens in your swing, because I, in, uh, I saw your Butch Harmon series that you did, which was really good. What, what usually happens is the golfers, wherever they are uh, up at the top, and this is controversial, but this comes from John Sinclair, who has measured over 450 tour pros in his database. It baffles me to say, okay, well, you got to have, a, if you have a flat rift, this makes it easier to square up. Well, what I see in all those players, they move a little bit towards flexion, then they go to extension, and then they go back into flexion on the downswing. And to be on his database, you need to have played on the PGA Tour. So his friend, uh, his student, Tyler Montgomery, who's a friend of mine, um, just got onto the database because he went from mini tour to real tour, and then he was uh, almost rookie of the year last year. He's like the best putter on tour now. Anyway, a really good ball striker. Anyway, so in John Sinclair's database, and it shows this on what almost every regular golfer is doing, they're taking wherever they are at the top. So some regular golfers might be like this, not many, some might be like this, some might be like this, but they are all taking this vector of motion this ways. Okay. So that doesn't mean that regular golfers are flexed or they're extended or wherever they are. Regular golfers are all over the place. They do all kinds of stuff, but every regular, but every, not every. So many regular golfers are in the process of adding more extension in their downswing. They go here and they start to pull on it and they start to turn and they go like this. So, so some people might be like that and they'll go like that. See, I've gone towards extension. But then some people who like just can't understand outliers or can't understand the forest for the tree stuff will say, what are you talking about? He went from here to here. He's still in flexion. I'm like, yeah, but he went towards extension. This is a concept people can't get. I don't know why. But they've extended the wrist a little bit. You specifically, and this is what they saw the the, the uh, Butch Harmon School, and this is why the motorcycle kind of feel was good for you. You specifically went from a pretty good top. I mean, that would have matched up with like, if I just took the still image of you and Louis Oosthuizen, it wouldn't have looked that different. I like that. From, from the top. And then, and then, but once you start moving down, you've gone from here and you can see it to about there with the hack motion, a device that I really like, you would actually, you would see the graph go towards extension. It would, it would be like the green line would go up. Now, what is Louis, I don't have his numbers, but I have Henrik's numbers and I have, I have a lot of tour pros numbers. What tour pros do is in transition, they go towards Flexion. Are you saying that most or 95% of tour pros are in flexion and transition? No, the, they, people can't get this. It's going towards flexion. So Shane Lowry at the top is like this, right? And as he makes his downswing, he goes from this to that. He's still in extension. Milo Lyons at, at the top is 30 some degrees extended. And then uh, he's not a tour player, but he hits it as well as a tour player. He, he puts as well as a regular golfer. But, but he's like this, and then he goes, he's still in extension, but he's gone from like 30 to like five. Lowry, I don't have his numbers, but you can see he goes from there to there. Tiger goes from flat to 
like one or two degrees. It's just a little bit, but it's still there. Rom goes from this to that. Okay. So it's, it's not about the position. It's about the pressure and the motion. And that's what Grover and other people were saying. Then when you get later in your swing, and this is where people go wrong with this, where you might have gone wrong with motorcycle mode. Once you've done this, so you've gone from here to there, right? I'm still in extension. Once you've done this, you go down to six, right? And that's like where the club is last parallel. That should be the, the this is a very important spot because that should be where you have roundabout, if you're taking a real general, should be roundabout where the most towards flexion you will ever get will be at six. Then from six through the ball, you're actually extending and doing this. This kind of happens as a reaction to the swing. This is the pronation, I think. And you're also doing this. So from there, because then in your finish, what do you like? You're like that, right? Spider-Man, or even if you're straight out, you're more extended than you were at six. So you're seeking towards extension. So if you want to see exactly what a picture perfect wrist can do to the golf ball, along with an absolutely perfect body, is uh, Vilko Nienaber on the DP World Tour. Uh, so he's whatever, six, seven or something like that. And just like a brick shit house. But his wrist motions, what does he do? He goes to the top. He's about like this. And then he goes, crank. You know, this is like the extreme. Then he gets down to six and he's like this. Totally. Like, look at him at six. He's like this, right? With his right wrist really back. Then when he hits the ball, boom, he hits it. And then he takes the wrist. And like the look at the the statue of Arnold Palmer at Bay Hill. So at six, he's like that. And then he does the Arnold Palmer Bay Hill thing. And he goes, boom, like that. And he wraps it around his neck like this. This guy has gone in one swing without moving my hands. He's gone top, crank, all the way. This is six. And then through the ball, he goes, shoom, you know? And then, uh, so, but he's moving his body so well, and he's letting the wrist react to that. There's definitely not one way that I've seen that's better, other than having that sequence of what i said okay seems to be a very good so flexion at the start mm -hmm. move towards extension at the top move towards flexion down towards you close the ball usually it's somewhere around 30 degrees before the club hits the ball the hand goes into extension you cannot just go to the top and rotate you cannot just go to the top and make your swing swing your swing whatever there, the hands have to be educated to do a certain thing because the golf club is like this. This is my big contention that other people don't say and argue with me about, but I'm right. The golf club is like this. It's a stick with mass off the end of it. Because of that, the center of mass is over here. It's outside of the golf club. So if you swung a golf club, just like you swung a regular stick, a regular stick, the center of mass is inside the stick. Baseball bat, same thing. Tennis racket, same thing. A golf club, a lot of the mass is on that head, and so it's outside. You have to do something to square that face. You can't, uh, and some golfers, you know, they say, like, you always hear this with Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa, all these, like, bowed wrist guys at the top. They say, like, oh, they go to the top, and now all they have to do is rotate. Okay, maybe mentally all they have to do is rotate. If you look at the wrist graphs, or if you look at the torques on the club, even those guys that all they're doing is rotating, are putting a little something on it because you're going to start to move that way. And that force needs to be, that's the matchup. That's the force needs to be balanced out a little bit. So this is like a lot of golf swing theory stuff or whatever, but the main, the main thing I would recommend people to do is film yourself and, and pay attention to that. And which direction in transition is that wrist moving? You'd rather be on the, the pro side. Are there some pros that go like this? and add a little extension yes but then very first of all very very few second of all then they'll have some kind of compensate compens compensation that they do that that they've just dialed and plus like uh not a lot of like major champions or whatever it's like people pick out these certain players like uh for example like um ricky fowler is an amazing player Ricky Fowler is an example that everybody uses because he's laid off and then he kind of steepens the shaft a little bit. 
just because there's a player that does that does not mean that that's like how you should be doing it. You should be looking at like, imagine you're looking at this collage of all these great players and then you have like fuzzy eyes and you're seeing just like the general shape of what good players do. You're not good enough. You're not young enough. You're not good enough. Golfers in general are not young enough. You're not good enough. You're not talented enough to take some like weird pattern and like make it work. You want to like do the basics of what, what works and it is what's been shown to work or just go out and swing your swing and just accept that you're going to be about what you're going to be. And you'll see this is the ultimate, like this is the deflection. You see how deep his elbow is in. Let's get, let me get you to the top here get you in a similar. We'll get him back. His top is swing. And he's got a very long swing, but he's right. turned, look how turned he is, right? right? Oops. Get you full. So you could kind of see a little a little difference. You look like to me that you're hanging a little on your left side. Okay. Your little your little stacking tilt. Right. I think you can definitely have some shift. Right. And look, everybody can turn like we can't all turn like DJ, but right. You can go around if you wanted to be in golf strike and you told you try to get people more shoulder rotation, you'd help 95% of the population, right. right? We all, almost every one of us need more turn. But you start, like, you start to see a bracing of here. Right. You know, you've got good lag into the club. You see how fast he is. Like, right. even when we're clicking on the thing, how he's already down here. And you, you're a quick player. That's just how quick he's swinging. Right. I you catch him. And you can see, definitely, we could get the hand a little more front. That's that right arm getting a little more in front of our body. Okay. That's that flexion. That's his, you always know he's famous for this, right? right. If we get this flexion, bowed feeling, Boom, this comes down, the right arm's more in front. Right. Right, that's what, you talk about irons not being too, they're comp compressed and hitting them high. Right. You hit them high because you come in a little bit this way, right? You lose a little of this. Right. Or if you had a little of this flexion, boom, it comes in and that right arm's a little in front. It's kind of that skipping rocks feeling. Right. Turn in a double play in baseball. Gotcha. Look at that. That was beautiful.